Hello. Today we're going to start talking about the circulatory responses to exercise, getting into stuff about the cardiovascular system. Uh, I'm trying a little something new. I'm putting myself up in the corner here so you can see me with my hand gestures and, and all that stuff in case I need to demonstrate anything. Um, I hope you guys are doing well and enjoying this little time off uh, with the coronavirus you guys are washing your hands and all that everything's gonna be cool everything will be good hopefully we'll see you back uh, at the end of the or at the start of the next school year for those of you guys graduating uh, keep in touch best of luck with everything all right so now cardiovascular system what happens to the cardiovascular system during exercise we're gonna start off I'll review uh, a major overarching question for this class uh, we're going to look into why VO2 max is so low in heart failure. And as we go around, I want you to start thinking about that. So first things first, heart failure, what is it? Uh, it's essentially the heart is fatigued and it cannot pump enough blood to meet the demand of the body. Now, the first stage is a heart failure. That means that the heart can't pump enough blood to sustain exercise and they get fatigued easily during exercise. But as the disease progresses, the, the heart gets weaker and weaker, and it can't s pump enough blood even to sustain, uh, to meet blood flow demand at rest. Uh, one of the reasons, if we look at VO2, I'll just, this is like a spoiler. If we look at VO2, VO2 can be calculated as a product of cardiac output times arterial venous oxygen difference. Uh, arterial venous oxygen difference is the content of oxygen in the artery versus the content of oxygen in the vein. Uh, Q, this is cardiac output. Cardiac output is how much blood the heart can pump every minute. Uh, what should be apparent from this equation is that your VO2, how much oxygen you can consume, and how much ATP you can resynthesize aerobically and sustainably is going to be highly influenced by how much blood your heart can pump. If you have zero cardiac output, if we just enter in this equation to be zero, it doesn't matter. You could times this by infinity and you'd still get no VO2. You would have no aerobic energy ATP resynthesis, and so you'd rely on these anaerobic systems to compensate and you'd fatigue very quickly. So cardiac output has a huge role in your ability to supply aerobic ATP. Now what happens with people with heart failure, uh, well, we have a lot of them. There's about almost six million cases in the US. Uh, one in nine deaths in the US are attributed to heart failure, and it costs a whole lot of money. Uh, all you people that are going into any kind of medical field, you're going to talk a lot about heart failure. And the nice thing is that anything, cardiology is essentially exercise physiology focused a lot on the heart. Uh, if we can understand how, what causes heart failure and what's going on with the heart, we might be able to improve outcomes for these patients. Uh, what's really cool is that a person's VO2 max and their exercise capacity is used to classify heart failure. And one of the classifying systems called the New York Heart Association Classification System, uh, your class one, two, three, or four, based off of how limited the, the heart failure makes you in terms of physical activity. If you can't uh, under, undergo any physical activity without discomfort and even have systems of, or symptoms of fatigue at rest, uh, that would put you at a stage four of heart failure. So exercise testing is a big deal in people with heart failure. And now here's the, the thing. Uh, with heart failure, a person with stage three, stage four heart failure, going upstairs like this, these are the stairs in the library. Uh, I go up all those all the time, or I used to, not so much anymore. I always like to look at the little divots here and and uh, I drag my feet on them trying to make them even deeper just just for fun Leave my way of leaving my mark on BYU but anyway that's like five or six steps so in a person with heart failure something like this five or six steps
would feel like the stairs of doom going up to main campus from the RB. It's just they get overly fatigued, and part of that is because they can't deliver enough blood and oxygen to the muscles, and they get fatigued. Um, heart failure, patients have a very low VO2 max. So here's yes, from a study, they look at the VO2 max of healthy controls, same age as the heart failure patients, and obese, non-obese heart failure patients. What you can see is their VO2 max is cut in about half much lower VO2 max, which means their exercise capacity is going to be way lower. Why is that? What's going on? Well, clearly by the name with heart failure, you're, going, you're assuming something's going on here at the heart. Uh, but what is it and why does it result in a decreased VO2 max? We'll talk about that this unit. Now, another thing that you'll need to keep in mind is with, with heart failure, VO2 max is often used as criteria for, for guiding clinical decisions. Uh, for example, one of the biggest clinical decisions a, a cardiologist can make is whether a person gets on the, the transplant list or not. And a lot of times they'll do exercise testing, and if an individual has a VO2 max under 14 milliliters per kilogram per minute, then that's pretty good evidence that they need a heart transplant. If they're just barely above that, if they're at 15 or 18, uh, the, the data suggests that that person probably can hang on without a heart transplant, at least for a while longer. So exercise capacity has everything to do with heart failure and even in guiding clinical decisions. So hopefully this unit, you'll figure out why that is and, and make connections to how exercise physiology applies, not just to uh, athletes, but also to patients. And that's where we'll stop. I'll, I'll end this video and we'll start another one for the rest of this lecture.